we are in awe of what they can do, and we're eternally grateful for what they have done. In reality, they are inanimate machines with neither souls nor personalities. Yet, something happens when they roar to life. Numerical designations on blueprints and spreadsheets somehow become Mustangs. Flying fortresses. Lightnings. Jugs. Liberators. We are so connected to these airplanes, mothers and daughters, grandmothers and uncles, grandfathers, cousins and neighbors built them, knowing that with every rivet and weld they made, they would soon be sending them to their fathers and brothers, their husbands and fiancés to carry them to a continuing series of life and death rendezvous. But up here in the sanctified air where those heroes fought and many died, there are no plaques, no monuments, no visitation centers. The only icons that remain now are the airplanes and the memories of those who flew them. The inherent purpose of a warbird is to be an instrument of war. It is preordained that its cockpits, turrets, radio rooms, and transport seats will one day be filled with ordinary people, people faced with what Admiral William F. Palsy called extraordinary circumstances. Many of those who were faced with extraordinary circumstances have written about their thoughts, their emotions, and their experiences. Often, they have expressed themselves in verse. The flak was thick around us, the fighters, they were worse, but above the roar of battle, you could hear the old man curse. The bombs they dropped from all the ships, the crisis finally passed. The old man yelled, get out of here, and brother, I mean fast. No matter at all how brave you are, no matter, lad, how bold, a flyer's great ambition is to die from growing old. Last night, I held a lovely hand, a hand so soft and neat, I thought my heart would burst with joy, so wildly did it beat. No other hand unto my heart could greater solace bring than that dear hand I held last night, four aces and the king. In a very real sense, these aircraft have been sanctified by those who flew them in harm's way. It's moving beyond anything that I can describe. I've actually seen veterans walk up and try to hug the airplane. And uh, it brings tears to their eyes. It brings tears to the eyes of those of us watching. These airplanes uh, represent history like you might see at a national park, but a national park is not something we have in the sky. And it's at places like Oshkosh where these airplanes are displayed that people can come, relate to them, see the veterans that flew them relate to them, and have an experience that you simply can't have anywhere else. Warbirds of America, to me, has been a deeply moving personal experience. Uh, Many of my best friends are involved in the Warbird movement. I would have never met them without this. So in a very real way, coming to Oshkosh for the first time 20 years ago changed my life, and it changed it for the better. Oh, 
Well, I can't say enough about the warbirds of America. They, they uh, and the people that uh, that enjoy that history and will get it going. They uh, get these magnificent old airplanes, which I call national treasures, and uh, restore them in pristine conditions, maintain them uh, probably better than uh, better than new. <laughs> Then for me, at my age, to be able to fly is uh, pretty special. But then to be able to fly a Mustang is even more special. But then to fly a Mustang that's painted just like the one I flew in World War II is pretty special. I mean, it, it, uh, it gets me right here. I can't say enough about Jack Roush uh, for doing what he's done for me. I. Uh... I consider myself to be a custodian of of the uh, of, of that part of that America's proudest history as it relates to the, the development of the, of the aviation uh, uh, technologies and industries we have it today. Uh, every time we do something for around the airplane, we make it nicer and more serviceable and safer than it was before. And and I hope and my hope and expectation is if there's if there's eons of generations of Americans that follow this, that they won't forget the time frame you know, in the 20th century when America had to go to war and American industry and the American economy was, uh, was mobilized in order to become the arsenal of defense and to provide the wherewithal to protect the freedoms, to fight tyranny and to, to make the uh, life on earth as, uh, as it wouldn't have been as if, if we'd lost that conflict. The monument's dedicated to those who serve. It's a place where people can come to reflect. People will uh, have their, uh, their names engraved in uh, bricks that are around the memorial itself. And it's a lasting tribute to all those military uh, personnel and veterans that have supported our efforts to help keep them flying. I think we see a lot of people entering the Warbird community. Well, within the, the trainer aircraft uh, group, uh, there's uh, ample opportunities for people to get into uh, a single engine, piston power Warbird. Uh, fairly simple to operate, fairly inexpensive to operate. They're fun to fly. Uh, people can uh, learn some basic aerobatic maneuvers. Again, represents a great way to get into Warbird flying. Warbirds is often thought of as big iron, the P-51s, the B-25, but it's much more than that. And a variety of aircraft uh, were present during the war and part of the war effort uh, for every conflict. And Warbirds of America encompasses everything from an L-4 Cub up to the largest bomber. Uh, our members uh, fly uh, things that are, are made in a variety of countries, come to us from a variety of historical avenues. Our members encompass people who are enthusiasts and history enthusiasts and folks that just like to be around airplanes or read about them. You don't have to be a pilot or an owner to be a member. It's very clear that people enjoy seeing and hearing uh, the classic jets. Aircraft such as the F-86 or the A-4, uh, which are being seen amongst the uh, participation on air show circuits around the country today. Not only do we display the aircraft, but here in the Warbirds area at Oshkosh, there are uh, historical reenactors that have an encampment. Walking through there, you see things much as they were in the 1940s during World War II. Uh, these folks really go all out. Uh, they have the uh, period clothing, uh, they actually camp in period equipment, and they drive period uh, vehicles. So it's a time capsule. Certainly when you walk through there and you see the impact on young people, and the interaction between the reenactors and, and children, kids, teenagers. It's very moving, and uh, this is a portion of history that uh, they may not get through uh, scholastics, but they certainly get it here. Well, one of the most popular programs during EAA Air Venture 
is a program called Warbirds in Review, where during the program, we'll actually tow an aircraft right in front of a set of bleachers. We'll have a current uh, pilot and a combat veteran get together and talk like talk about what it was like to operate the aircraft during combat days and what it's like to operate the aircraft in today's current environment. Our membership uh, goes from pilots and owners to people that just have a love for history and a love uh, for aviation. Some of the benefits of being a member of EAA Warbirds of America include uh, a subscription to Warbirds magazine. I think the magazine appeals to a broad spectrum of aviation enthusiasts. You can do so by joining a number of different ways. Uh, the easiest is by uh, looking at our website, www.warbirds-eaa.org. Click on the Join tab and you'll get all the information you need right at your fingertips. It's important to keep these airplanes in front of the public as an educational tool so they can learn about the sacrifices that were made by our aviators and support personnel over the years. Many times I've wanted to ask them, and now that we're all here alone, relics, all three, of a long ago war, where has freedom gone? Freedom flies in your heart like an eagle let it soar with the winds high above among the spirits of soldiers now sleeping. Guard it with care. Guard it with love. I salute my old friends in the corner. I agree with all they have said. And if the moment of truth comes tomorrow, I'll be free, or by God, I'll be dead.